Welcome to this video. This video is all about Camtasia, and in particular, it's about the cursor effects in Camtasia. So here we have a video, this is a video I've recorded, and it's just off me on my website, clicking on the website in various places. It's not particularly exciting. I've done it for demonstration purposes. But if you click on this piece of media, and you have properties open on the right hand side. So if your properties is closed, just click on this little button here. You've got the media information, you've got things relating to sound, and you've got cursors. Now this is for Camtasia 2023, where they've made quite a lot of changes to it. Uh, lots of improvements. And you have the cursor effect here. So this is the cursor that's in use. And you can do lots of things with the cursor. If you're not seeing all these options like I am, you need to click on this little drop down there. So that's what you might be seeing currently. Click on the little drop down and you'll see all these different options. But notice when I've gone into the cursor part of it, all the cursor elements, either whether it's been clicks or resizes or you know, moving around and so forth, they all appear on the timeline. If I go back to the bit of media, they're not on there anymore. So this is really useful because you can see when the actual you know, effect is happening, when when my cursor is doing something. So we see this one here. I, um, click, you know, my mouse changes because I've hovered over a bit of the screen. I've clicked on it and I've gone to a different area. And you can see here that this is the cursor that's in use at the moment, which is what it is there. And as I move the mouse, it changes it to this one here, which is what it is there. I've done nothing to this video. I've not done any editing on it. So this is what Camtasia is doing for me, which is really good. But you can change the cursors as well. We've got recorded cursors, we've got Windows cursors, Mac, custom cursors, hand-drawn, and neon. So have a look at neon. So <laughs> neon cursors, what have we got here? We've got love hearts. So what I've done, I've clicked on it, and we're now using a love heart cursor. Uh, let's have a look at some of these other ones. A lightning bolt. Yeah, you can have that. So, now it's changed it to a lightning bolt because of what it is at that period of time. Yeah, so if I was to go to this one here, I'm now, you can see it's turned yellow. So you can see I'm using that type of cursor now, which is this one here. So I can change that and then to a, whatever that pink thing is. There, so we've gone from a lightning bolt to a pink thing. Looks like a paw or hand. So that's different things that you can do with the cursors. And it stays as that cursor type for that period. You can also change the scale of it. So let's find where the cursor is. Here we go. So the cursor is there at the top right. Change the scale of it. Make it bigger. It's now gone off the screen. This one. There we go. And what it does, it changes the scale of the cursor for all of them. So they're all staying bigger. Which again is good. I wouldn't necessarily go quite as big as I have on it. But it is good. You know, if your cursor is particularly small, or if you're, you're recording your entire screen, then you want to make your cursor more visible. Additionally, you still have the cursor effects. So if I go to cursor effects on the left hand side here, you've still got these effects, which were on previous versions of Camtasia as well. To use those, it's best to actually clip, to actually cut the clip to use them. And I'll show you why. So let's go for cursor spotlight, and it's going to be on this entire clip. If I apply cursor spotlight to the entire clip, it's made the clip dark. And then as my mouse occurs, you can see there's a spotlight happening, which is good for sections of it, but I don't want the entire video to be dark. So I'll undo that, Control Z just undoes that. So if I did want to use it for, let's say, this section here, what I would do, I would cut this. I put in the timeline where I want it, press S on my keyboard, same again for there, let's move it down to there, S on my keyboard, I've got this one section here, I'll go to cursor spotlight, put it in just that section there, and then when you do the timeline along, you can see it's normal, 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 and then we've got spotlight, and then the spotlight ends. So that's how I'd use that. And the same for any of these ones. So let's, uh, let's do another one here. Let's do a bigger section there. And let's go for the highlighter one. 
So you can see just over there, we've got a highlighter in place, but I wouldn't necessarily want that for the entire video. It can be quite distracting. And if you want your mouse cursor to completely disappear, let's find a good clip to do this on. There you go. So you can see the mouse cursor is there. What you need to deal with is opacity. So make sure you've got the media selected. So I'm on this piece here. And if I want to get rid of a mouse cursor entirely, just drag that down. You can see it fading away. There you go. It's completely invisible now. This is one of the nicest features of Camtasia. So again, I wouldn't want to do that for the entire thing, but let's pretend I was moving my mouse all over the place for this section. Now I've cut the section. I'll click on that bit there, so that's the media, and I want to hide my mouse cursor just for this section here. Reduce opacity to zero. So we've got this clip here, we can see it. The mouse cursor disappears, and then the mouse cursor comes back again. As I say, this is one of the real big advantages of using Camtasia. I do a lot of videos on how to use different pieces of IT software. And my mouse does go all over the place at times. I try not to, but sometimes it happens. And it's often distracting for the user. So being able to hide the mouse cursor is really beneficial. And also using the different effects as well. You've also got the left click and the right click effect. I'll just quickly demonstrate those bits. So if I was to, let's find where some mouse clicks. So we've got some bits happening here. What I can do to this clip, let's go for the left click because I use the left click in there. I can drag and drop onto that section. And then as I click, you can see this little red circle is appearing. There you go. So it's a nice little effect again to really highlight where I have clicked. If you're doing lots of clicking, you might want to avoid using it too much. You know, it can be distracting, but it's up to you. You can also add in sound effects. You can have ripples. You can have you know, lots of different methods of displaying that click. Hopefully you found this video useful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more top tech tips.